Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain ASK Amplitude Shift King with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of ASK. After that, I will explain waveforms, bandwidth, demodulation, constellation diagram, advantages, disadvantages and applications of ASK. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of ASK. See ASK is digital modulation scheme. So here we will be having input signal that will be digital signal and we will be modulating that digital signal and output signal will be analog signal. So ASK is digital modulation technique that is used to convert digital signals into analog form by varying amplitude of carrier signal. So here what we will be doing is we will be changing amplitude of carrier signal with respect to digital input signal. Right. See ASK is digital modulation technique where amplitude of carrier signal varies according to digital message signal. Let me explain that by modulation process. So in modulation here we have input signal that is digital message signal. Here we have carrier signal that is cos omega CT that is sinusoidal signal and we will be multiplying these two signals and resultant signal will be ASK. Let me explain that by one practical scenario. Let us consider here logic 1 that is amplitude 1 and logic 0 that is amplitude 0. So if you multiply these two signals then at output side as if message signal is logic 1 then over here ASK signal will be carrier signal and as if message signal is logic 0 at that time 0 multiply with carrier will be 0 over here right. So this is what about binary ASK binary ASK is also referred as on off king here as if digital data is logic 1 then ASK signal will be carrier signal and as if digital data is 0 then ASK signal will be 0 right. So that is how binary ASK is there. See in next video I will explain calculation of amplitude for this message signal and I will also explain constellation diagram. Right now you need to understand fundamentals only calculation part that I'll cover in next video. Now I'll explain you waveforms of ASK. So for that I'll consider digital data that is message signal. You can observe logic 1 is having higher amplitude, logic 0 is having 0 amplitude and bit duration is TB, right. Here we have carrier signal. You can observe that is sinusoidal signal. So if you talk about ASK signal, then that is multiplication of this two that is binary ASK right. So at logic 1 you can observe here we have carrier right and at logic 0 we have 0 amplitude right. At logic 1 we have carrier and at logic 0 we have 0 amplitude in ASK signal. So that is how one can obtain amplitude shift king output right. Now I'll explain you very essential part of ASK that is bandwidth of ASK. See bandwidth of ASK that one can understand by two different analogies. Here see ASK signal that we generate by multiplying digital message signal with carrier signal right. So what will be bandwidth of ASK signal? See ideally bandwidth of ASK signal that has to be baud rate of digital message signal but practically it should be slightly greater than that. If you calculate that by equation then that will be baud rate into 1 plus alpha where alpha is roll off factor depending on filtering. See ideally bandwidth of ASK signal that has to be bandwidth of input digital signal along with its baud rate right. So here if I say baud rate of this digital message signal that is R then ideal bandwidth is R only but practically you need to multiply R with 1 plus alpha 
where alpha is role of factor depends on filtering. The reason is we don't have sharp edge filters. Always there will be some slope, right? So you will have to take slightly greater bandwidth over here. Now you need to understand bandwidth in other context as well. Like you see here we have digital message signal. If you observe bandwidth of digital message signal as per square wave, then that will be sync function, right? So bandwidth of this ASK that is depending on bandwidth of digital message signal. If we have highest frequency FB with digital message signal, then at Nyquist rate, you will be having FB that is R by 2, where R is data rate of this digital message signal. So in that situation, bandwidth will be two times of FB, right? So here you can say minimum bandwidth that will be two times of FB. Let me explain that by frequency response. If you observe square wave of this digital message signal, then that is having frequency response that is like sync function. And here you can observe with this first band, frequency is one by TB, right? So from here to here, we have major low. So that is what minimum bandwidth that one can say. So what is the space of this minimum bandwidth? That is from minus FB to plus FB means it will be 2 FB, right? So that is how one can understand bandwidth as per band of that digital signal and that one can understand with respect to baud rate and roll of factor depending on filtering. Now, I'll explain you demodulation process of ASK. See, demodulation can be done by two different ways. One is synchronous demodulation and second is asynchronous demodulation. First of all, you need to understand what is the meaning of synchronous demodulation. See, at receiver side, if you have carrier signal, then you can say we have synchronous demodulation. And at receiver side, if you don't have carrier signal, then that will be asynchronous demodulation, right? So demodulation is having two types, synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous demodulation is also known as coherent demodulation and asynchronous demodulation that is also known as non-coherent demodulation. In coherent demodulation, at receiver side, we have carrier. To have a demodulation process, here what we do is, we multiply ASK signal with carrier signal. I have told you what is ASK signal? That is a multiplication of message with carrier, right? And here we have carrier that is cos omega CT. If you multiply these two again, then here we will be having MT cos square omega CT, right? Now, if you pass this signal through low pass filter, then we will be having message signal. Let me explain how. See cos square omega CT, that is 1 plus cos 2 omega ct divided by 2. So cos 2 omega ct component that is having higher frequencies, right? So what is remained over here? Mt divided by 2. So that is our message signal, right? So that is how one can have synchronous ASK demodulation. So first we will be multiplying ASK with carrier and then we will pass it through low pass filter that is resulting into message signal. Here one disadvantage is there. What is that? Here we need carrier signal, right? But one advantage is there. See this method of demodulation that is having better response. So if you talk about pros, then that is efficient method. And if you talk about con, then here we need oscillator for carrier. The reason is in synchronous demodulation, you need to have carrier signal at receiver side. Now I'll explain you asynchronous demodulation. So in asynchronous demodulation, we don't need carrier. So here received signal is ASK. First of all, we will pass it through rectifier and then we will pass it through low pass filter. See this process is envelope detector process, which I have already explained in analog communication. So here we will be detecting envelope of signal. And once we have envelope, we will be comparing that with comparator so here there will be reference and this signal with respect to reference when we compare at output side we will be having digital signal. So here we have one advantage 
that is based on carrier signal here we don't need carrier signal but this method is not efficient right so if you talk about pros then here we don't need oscillator for carrier if you talk about con then it is having poor performance here we will be having less snr right now let me explain constellation diagram of ask first of all let me explain what is constellation diagram see in constellation diagram we explain symbols with respect to amplitude and phase so here if you talk about distance with respect to center then that is amplitude and angle with respect to horizontal axis that is phase let me explain binary esk see in binary esk we have two symbols only logic 0 and logic 1 logic 0 is having zero amplitude so but obviously it should be at center over here zero amplitude and zero phase right if you talk about logic 1 then that is having somewhat amplitude that calculation of amplitude that i'll explain in my next video but here with logic 1 let us consider some amplitude is there so but obviously it should be having some distance with respect to center and it should be having zero phase so it is there on this axis only right now let me explain little interesting case of ask here four ask is there what it means here we will be having four symbols so to have four symbols here we will be having 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 see all the symbols is having zero phase but if you talk about magnitude of 0 0 symbol that is minus a magnitude of 0 1 symbol that is minus a by 2 magnitude of 1 0 symbol that is plus a by 2 and magnitude of 1 1 symbol that is a so that is how based on magnitude and phase one can plot constellation diagram of ask right in next video what i'll do is i'll explain you calculation of amplitude and based on that you can solve problems even right now let me explain advantages of ask see it is simple to implement here modulation and demodulation process is easy see that is band efficient you will be having minimum bandwidth that is 2 fb right so that is band efficient and it is useful for low cost application if you talk about disadvantages then it is highly susceptible to noise always remember this as and when you do modulation process with respect to amplitude then it will be always susceptible to noise right the reason is here decision making that is happening with respect to amplitude if decision making happens with respect to phase or frequency then that is having lower probability of noise but amplitude is having highest probability of noise right so it is highly susceptible to noise that's why we don't use it for wireless communication the reason is in wireless communication we will be having higher noise always right see if you talk about applications then but obviously we don't prefer this ask for wireless communication but we do prefer ask for optical fiber communication where we send light signal right and it can be used for low frequency rf communication one of the application is RFID tag in which we used to have binary ASK, right? See, it can be used in modems. In early modems, we were been using that, right? And one more application that is there, that is based on IR remote control, right? So this is all about fundamentals of amplitude shifting. In next video, I'll explain you mathematical background of this ASK. After that, I'll solve some interesting examples based on ASK. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.